Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And we have Tim Alexander uh, giving us a major update on what's going on. Of course, one of the biggest issues, even beyond in some ways Fukushima, uh, is the drought and the extreme weather. And, of course, we, we predicted this two years ago when we got Dr. Zangari from the Frascati Institute, the NOAA scientists. I contacted even uh, some researchers from the Whistle Massachusetts facility in NOAA, and they confirmed they were working with Frascati as well as the NASA scientists. They had uh, what's called nonlinear models that showed that when the loop current was disconnected, the driver, the pacemaker for the world climate, literally the heart, believe it or not, is the Gulf of Mexico, the United States, America. That Gulf of Mexico is now disconnected. We now have a, an air uh, current that no longer is carrying out most of the heat from the Gulf, which is why it's so hot there. And the extreme weather extremes all over the planet, including very cold in some areas and very hot in others, is causing drought and floods, like in China, they had a major flood there last week, which has killed, I think, 38 people, the highest rains in, in, in 60, the Beijing area. Yeah. In Beijing area in 60 years. We have also extreme heat in Moscow and in northern areas across the country. The, the corn crop is decimated. Uh, the crops even in the southern hemisphere, it's not just northern hemisphere. Uh, these, these are directly linked to not only the Macondo drill problem, but also galactic and cosmic changes that are occurring because we're heading into an ice age and it's driven by volcanism, and volcanism under the oceans puts more sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. We've had Dr. Ward on talking about this in the past. We've had other scientists uh, giving us information that integrated all together tells us we're heading into famine, we're heading into the times of trouble, as it says in the Bible, Matthew 24. Uh, but you document this very well on your website, europebusiness.blogspot.com, where they can Google Tim Alexander, Lord Sterling, and they'll find it. Europe Business, Europe Business. Yeah, Lord. Uh, uh, best thing to do is Google Lord Sterling Europe. Yeah. I'll get you right there. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, way to go over this Bill, information. I've got links uh, the, that show the uh, latest satellite surface current forecast uh, for the loop current uh, in North Atlantic. Right. Uh, in the Gulf Stream, the uh, the temperatures for the loop current in the Gulf Stream and cur- current status of the Gulf Stream. Right. Uh, the loop current now, uh, basically about two years uh, into uh, this disaster, and it's an ongoing disaster, is still not there. Now, this current uh, function for, well, we don't even know how long, but certainly since the last ice age, uh, which we're talking thousands of years, is part of the uh, thermal highline circulatory system, which is in the entire Atlantic Ocean. And it makes a giant loop. Uh, it goes up uh, to Britain. Some goes even further north, Norway current. Some goes down Canary current. And then goes uh, down off the coast of uh, Africa. Crosses. Uh, some goes all the way down to Antarctic. Some crosses uh, uh, and hits the tip of Brazil. Again, some heads south. Some heads north. And that which heads north, eventually uh, the Lucatan, it becomes the Lucatan current, and it goes normally into the mouth of the Gulf of Mexico, makes a, a large loop, gathers an enormous amount of very hot water, and then comes out, becomes the Florida current, and goes up to Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, where it shoots across the Atlantic, and it's called the Gulf Stream. Now, the reason for the different names is those currents were discovered at different times in history. And, you know, they didn't know 200, 300 years ago uh, uh, much about uh, the climatic uh, conditions or, the, the you know, anything. So they didn't know they were all part of one thermal highline circulatory system. Now, uh, the normally that Gulf Stream, which is a river of warm water and much colder North Atlantic water, uh, you can see in uh, back uh, over a year ago, I ran photos of it on my website. You can see that it affects the atmosphere for several miles above that stream of warm water, and that effect. Uh, acts as a steering mechanism on the atmospheric jet stream. So the Gulf Stream acts as a steering mechanism on the atmospheric jet stream. Well, the Gulf Stream isn't near as warm because it's missing all this hot water. The loop current is not there. It's not functioning. And uh, all that hot water is staying in the Gulf. And the jet stream affects global patterns, not just in the northern hemisphere, but in the southern hemisphere. Uh, Australia right now is having uh, a very cold winter. 
at times in in uh, Argentina, they've had uh, they had uh, a while back they had an entire season's worth of snow in a, in a week or two. Um, in Anchorage, Alaska, believe it or not, they're having uh, record breaking. They just broke 13 records. Uh, I think it was yesterday. Uh, cold weather. Uh, but in Greenland, uh, on the other side of the uh, North Atlantic uh, or the North American landmass, uh, the ice cap is almost, uh, I think it's 90%, 97% melted, which is, it never gets that far melted. Now, that may partially be from uh, the, the thermal venting, uh, because we do know that we're having increased uh, volcanic uh, Under ocean, uh, yeah. Activity. The guy. Yeah, the Gakal Range, for example, in the Arctic, is 1,500 miles of volcanic mountains, believe it or not, a mountain range, 1,500 miles long in the Arctic Circle. And most people aren't aware that when those volcanic vents vent off down anywhere from a couple miles below the sea surface, the water coming out is 750 to 780 degrees at incredible pressures. So it's not surprising that that heat is like boiling a kettle from the bottom, which is how you get hot water. You're going oh, yeah. to have these, the ice uh, melt. Uh, so the ice melting for two reasons. That and the other reason is high energy of ultraviolet C and D will cause cracking and release of the permafrost because the ozone layer is de- disappearing and high energy C is actually well, and, and the and jet stream which is above it is acting abnormal. So you're getting warm, much far, warmer weather normally going over that area, and so you got about three factors there. Yeah, at least three uh, factors. At there's one three. article I linked that's real interesting. Uh, it's uh, from Zero Hedge. Uh, yeah. Fun, uh, and it says deep fried black swan goes global as drought spreads from U.S. to Asia and now to Southern Europe, and it's only a paragraph I want to read it. Uh, the U.S. drought, which, pre- as, which as previously noted, is the worst in decades, has already caused corn prices to hit a record and soy to soar. As we first reported last week and subsequently Bloomberg also caught, Asia could well be next to suffer soaring food prices as the monsoon season, which is critical for uh, the area's agricultural production, is 22% below normal conditions for the year. In fact, if there is one thing preventing the PBOC from engaging in full-blown easing, it is precisely the threat that just as it floods the market with excess CYN, the food supply of corn, a food will collapse, causing widespread riots and chaos. Chaos a la Arab Spring 2011. And now, just to make sure that the threat of full out global food crisis is complete, the deep fried black swan has truly gone global. We find that a heat wave in southern Europe is causing the corn crops to weather in a region that is responsible for 16% of global exports. Yeah. So we're, we're this this disruption, which, by the way, uh, and as our uh, most of our listeners know, the BP oil disaster was not an accident. It was deliberate. They knew from the 1950s never to drill there. That area, by the way, is, uh, the the uh, name translates into uh, the devil's food. Yeah, Macondo. Yeah. yeah, we have actually BK Lemon. I'm trying to vet out the information, but he said. Recently, not only did they drill in three locations, not two, but he said the ultimate damage to the seafloor at the bottom of the Gulf was a micronuke. Now, I've got to vet that out because that's like over the top. But the fact is they drilled in the salt dome that I dug up the reports from a conference in New Orleans in 1951, and I'm 60. A year before I was born, they told engineers, don't drill in this place. This is a place that's dangerous. And they even named it the, the devil's food because it's a salt dome. It's a volcanic tar dome, they said. And there were no license issued to any American drillers to drill there. They knew it was too dangerous. They all said, look, you can't even develop pressure valves to be able to handle it in your drill rigs and your and your and to, to put the mud down and everything. They knew it was impossible, and yet they gave them a license to BP. Yeah, and it's still drilling in the used core exit to sink the oil, which can't be cleaned up, which is what's killing the loop current, and it continues and to kill. They're still using it. In other words... And it's going to kill a lot of people on this planet. Right. There's still thousands of uh, t- gallons per day are being used as a crack to hide the fact it's still seeping there, and they're hiding the fact that the sea life is dying as well as the gulf, and that's why this, the jellyfish are going crazy there, taking over in a low-oxygen environment. Whoa. 
welcome back. Uh, before we change topics, you mentioned about climate. Uh, you mentioned uh, on your website, uh, which is your business, you've got the greenhouse in Greenland. 97% of the ice surface shows melting, but we also are seeing the glaciers in Alaska increasing. 80% of the glaciers, by the way, on Earth are increasing. What's going on is uh, we're seeing that where I just got an email uh, the day before yesterday from uh, Australia, and they're in a big freeze. Perth, oh, yeah. and much of the state is having chilly nights. Uh, some of the coldest, literally re- record recorded temperatures ever, ever. Talking about the whole history of Australia in hundreds of years, ever recorded now. So, you know, same in New Zealand. What's going on? The weather is extreme. But what we have to understand is the global time climate changes are a prelude to famine. Famine. We're talking about famine. We've talked about this before. We have it on our website preparewise.com if you go to the link on our site yeah, you need to get yourself ready one of the drivers that the globalist and and the the uh, Netanyahu Zionists used to create and to manipulate the Arab Spring was the fact that there was uh, uh, food shortages in many North African countries due to the climate uh, or abnormalities that were already happening last year Right and food prices it went up and people who literally are hanging by their their fingernails when food prices go up something's got to give what's well, going to be a lot worse this year. Um, yeah, so we to need to change. First, uh, uh, there's a couple things. Uh, we, 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 I, yeah, I want to jump back to the topic we talked about on the break, which is this Aurora thing, and I want to throw a little thing in the mix as a doctor. The we have a situation where we have someone who basically looks like he's doped out and he's out of his mind in the courtroom. This guy was his he, he to me the man obviously was drugged in the courtroom and now of course the judge has slapped a, a gag order on everything and the next appearance will not be televised. Okay, uh, let, let, the, let, let, the photos let me I posted on my site. Uh, some reporters went over early in the morning while everything was still roped off and the evidence hadn't been moved. They went over there either in a helicopter or a light plane and snapped a, a number of pictures. And out back, uh, there are some real problems with uh, what the photos show and what we told ha- was happened. Now, his car was parked right by this exit, okay? Right. But the door to that exit was bloody. There was blood all over it. And we weren't told anybody was there that was bloody. They didn't find a body there, for instance. The AR-15 rifle that was laying there did not have a 100-round barrel clip. It had a straight clip, although he may have changed the clip. Uh, that's what you're saying is you different. might have got in through the exit but after shooting somebody is what you're trying to say. Well, no, I'm, 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 first, I'm just, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm just presenting the facts that the photos, if you go on my site from a couple of days ago, you can see the photos. Okay. Right, okay. Uh, and the gas mass was not found by the car or the exit there. It was found, oh, half a block away at the end of this parking lot, the back of the parking lot, and there were a couple other trash, that, like plastic bags there. How did that get down there? Because supposedly he came out and he sat down. Uh, now, from that, yes, I could I could give you several theories of what what may have happened, but I'm telling you the photos of the evidence do not jive with what we've been told. Okay, okay. well, here's what I'm hearing so far, and I'm waiting and reserving the evidence that I'm getting. The first thing is I have from some of my sources that his family are heavily involved with high levels of neuroscience research. So it's not surprising when into neuroscience and that his relatives that are involved in this are involved with DARPA type I'm, I'm control. told that, that Aurora is where the CIA domestic operations have been centered on for a number of years. Right. In fact, uh, you have to understand the CIA operations formally moved to, uh, to, from, from, uh, from Virginia to Aurora, Colorado. That's what I've been told. Yeah, well, but also his family, this specifically John Holmes' family, were involved with scientific research and neuroscience involving super soldiers, etc. Now, I have to vet this information, but that's what I'm getting from my sources. So it's not surprising you get the special federal government grant for a very large project in a relatively small department. Also, there was apparently a book uh, of information or a large note sent to a psychiatrist that left it, was found in the mailroom on Monday uh, that he was planning on doing all this. So why? why? Why did you send this to a psychiatrist literally caught in the mailroom for literally it was down there a week? So it was there well before the event happened. Now, the other thing we have to understand is I call toxic drugs, toxic electronic drugs. 
Uh, I saw the newspaper here in North County, San Diego, and it showed the gentleman who plays Batman and uh, his wife. And he looked very sad. He was dressed in jeans, looking down. Couldn't believe it. Looked like just like a regular, you know, very fit guy. What they have to understand is when you make these big blockbuster movies, we don't have the Batman of, you know, Batman and Robin was cartoonish. We have a very aggressive Batman that is very, uh, uh, how can I say, vindictive. Uh, it shows a very dark side of black Batman. Basically, it shows uh, a superhero with superpowers turning the dark side on people. And, of course, vanquishing the enemies. And the enemies, of course, vanquishing people, too. So what we have is what I call toxic media, toxic video games as drugs. I remember taking care of uh, some of the senior uh, officers at Air Force Academy, and they said back in, when they first had their contract with uh, DARPA to develop the Atari games for training pilots at Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, they were worried that they couldn't turn off the kill switch. They were worried that they would get so good at killing uh, in these video games that it would be hard to switch them off when they tell them to stop shooting, to stop bombing, to stop whatever. Now, the problem is these kids, he told me this interesting thing back in 1994, that... They could drop a young person now with the new video games, and that was back then. They were much more sophisticated now, into the cockpit of these jets, and their brains are wired differently than people of the, the previous generation. Within five to six weeks, he said, they are more expert, have faster reflexes, and can multitask more than even their Top Gun pilots. So they're taking 16, 18-year-olds, they can drop in there even on a weekend and show how fast they'll learn. And when they get a new pilot that comes in and it's been doing like 12, 14 years of video games with, you know, toggling switches and so on. Not only that, the parts of their brain that are switched on and off, the, uh, the, yeah. the uh, range the, control the, the nucleus. The aircraft today are used yeah, fly by wire and fly But by not just that, the, the areas of their brain so are you switched on. don't have a hydraulic leakage the, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah let me, it's let basically me, a joystick. Let me let's finish this because what happens is there's parts of their brain called the amygdala, the range control nucleus, and so on, the subthalamic nucleus. And when they tried to recruit me, I was going to work on multiple sclerosis in 78 at UCLA. They had been already working on what's called the Rambo chip, which they actually had implanted working with the Tavistock Institute in the rage control nucleus. And they'd insert these uh, things and had a chip ringed and a wire down to their neck. And they could actually have radio control to turn on the kill switch to make them kill and then turn it off with radio signal. Uh, these Rambo chips, by the way, were implanted transcranially into their rage control nucleus in their brain. And they know that these video games are training people to turn on the rage control nucleus. This kid uh, basically is part of what's called the, the the kill reflex, I call it. It's when people are watching all these video games, you're going to get a percentage of people, uh, you know, high-powered movies, they, they're, they're, it's easy for them to kind of start separating, but they may be under the influence of drugs or mind control or whatever. We know that what we need to do is not have more laws against guns. What we need to do, and I proposed this before, is that we should have a registry that's local only with the county sheriff. It never becomes state or federal. You'd be able to buy any gun you want, but you have to go through psychological evaluations before you do. And this kid should have been picked up long beforehand with his behavior. A small department, someone should have known he was over the edge. And I think there's, there's a lot of evidence that he may have been a subject of a little bit of experimentation as well. Welcome back uh, to the Nutra Medical Report, and we have joining us uh, Chris Harris. I want to just wrap up the uh, last comments we had. Uh, at the moment, I'm not going to make a, a full judgment, but just putting together the pieces I have so far, we have these, you know, facts we can put on our kind of fact board. Number one, Aurora is a new headquarters for the CIA. Number two, the neuroscience uh, department there and the psychiatrist obviously didn't red flag this guy's something wrong. And number three, we don't know if there was an accomplice. There's a couple of anomalies in the evidence that suggest there may have been an accomplice, or in fact that maybe this guy didn't even do all of it. That in fact he was a uh, the dupe. We don't know. Yeah. I, I, I have a 30-second observation uh, uh, to make. Okay, in the first six decades of the 20th century, from the year uh, 1900 till uh, after the assassination of President Kennedy till about 1964, 
there were zero instance of, of a crazy person going into a movie theater and shooting it up or somebody going up on a tire and shooting people or like Combine uh, two students well, going that, in well, that one, by the way, blowing up the school. But, by the way, the gentleman never happened, had... It and never happened the previous century. The right. only thing that happened the previous century was in London, England, the uh, Jack the Ripper. And that was so strange, 150 years later, we still know about it. Well, well so Jack the Ripper, they thought was... Is, that was that's was he, not normal human behavior for yeah. something like this to happen. I, I know you're a historian, but I saw you love these two facts. The first thing, they think Jack the Ripper had Louis, which is uh, syphilis of the brain. So he had basically a gamma in his brain. And the gentleman that went in the tower in Texas that started shooting back in the 60s, he actually wrote in his, on his uh, note when he died, he wanted an autopsy to study his brain, and it turned out he had a brain tumor in the amygdala, the rage control area of his brain. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so. but, but even still, I mean, that was, even still, that was so abnormal. So we've had multiple incidents in the last few years, or the, 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 uh, the two guys that the sniper and his backup out, uh, out in uh, D.C. Cle- Cle- yeah. and, and what I'm saying is uh, this is probably at least partially the, uh, the result of all this crap, the, the, the games, the movies, and so forth. But it also may well be a globalist pro- uh, thing to keep people on edge, to keep people in a crisis mode. Well, now here's what they want to do. You got to know where we want to go. They, what they want to do eventually. Whether it's, uh, that's why, for example, most people aren't aware that since Three Mile Island and some of these other places where they should have better safety, and since 9-11, every nuclear facility now has to have special security to even get on the, on the area. But they, they want to have it so every movie theater, every bus station, every shopping center, you have to have TSA agents. They have to put you through a terahertz <laughs> scanner, do a gro- I I call the groper. I won't be going to movie theaters if I yeah, have to they, be they call the groper scan. To- yeah, that's what they want. They would, and, and by the way, I've I've said this before, and we've had experts on the program, and we had our expert for, that actually came from Switzerland and presented at one of our academy meetings that unless you do an ultrasound of the body or a CT scan, you can't find surgically implanted bombs. So doing a body cavity search, even if you have an anatomically abnormally long index finger, or you even put a scope in the rectum, they can have an abdominally inserted or under the breast inserted or fat pad inserted bomb, and you can't find it. So unless you do an ultrasound, and you need to do first is a, a kind of a 30 questions of everybody, which you can do in a few minutes, then you don't need to terahertz scan them. You simply need to go through uh, and ask them, Profile them, number one, and anybody that shows up either being Muslim and or answers incorrectly to a pile of questions, they need to have an ultrasound in the back room. Very simple. Gown and grab, grab them with an ultrasound technician and ultrasound them. The steroid scanners need to go. The problem is yeah, the but I'm not going to go through all that crap just to walk in the movie theater or get on a bus. No, no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about an, an airliner, okay? It could be very easy. First off, you answer 10, 20 questions. Boom, 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 boom. You're fine. You, you just keep walking. You go through the rental, regular metal detectors and the x-ray your bags and everything. Taking off your shoes and the idea your shoelaces are going to have a bomb in them. Uh, this idea of having no water bottles, that they're going to have some kind of water. That's also foolishness. We have already know the chemistry is foolishness. But they still continue the policies. And the reason is they want to cow the public. Now, why is this tied to, to Fukushima and to nuclear plants? They have everybody in fear now of these nuclear reactors. I live within a couple miles of uh, Congressman Issa, okay? And he lives in we're within 12 miles of San Onofre. San Onofre is shut down. They kept, tried everything to get that plant reactivated. They spent two times $600 million to replace the two steam turbines in that reactor had an inferior design that they know now has failed, and they've tried everything to get the damn thing back up again, and now they're going to transfer the, 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 the cost to us, the people at Southern California Edison and San Diego Gas and Electric and the others that utilities that use that power. Now, what do you have to understand? Why is this? They want us in this state of fear. Fear because we don't have knowledge of what's going on in Fukushima. Fear because they're not doing proper upgrades or back, you know, backup power systems for the reactors. When people have a clue, they know that there's reactors sitting near the New Madrid fault system on tsunami zone areas. We talked about this tomorrow with John Moore about the danger of this information that some people think may be a warning that there's something going to happen real soon. I'm real skeptical about that, to be honest with you. But I, I tell you what's not skeptical is that all of the nuclear reactors in America vent off tritium. All the nuclear reactors are using older designs that need to be upgraded. All of them are storing radioactive waste on site. 
all of them are not spending the money to make them safe enough to actually be good. Now the fact is, why, why is nuclear power important? Well, it's a thing called peak oxygen. There's no shortage of abiotic fuel on Earth. There is a shortage of organisms that can generate oxygen in the carbon cycle. That's what the problem is. And so we need safe nuclear f uh, f fuel and energy in the future, but none of the reactors that are currently being used are safe, and that includes even the thorium and pebble bed reactors. They have to be significantly improved, and they have to have a safe way of moving radioactive material from the site so you don't have decades of radioactive material ready to either go hot uh, or to itself become an explosive or be used to be stolen to become a you know, nuclear weapon used by, quote, terrorists, which is always the government. The government's always the one behind this kind of craziness. So, Chris, I want you to give an update as to what is happening here in America and what's happening in Fukushima, because the more we see of this, the more insane it gets. Well, just this week, it's funny you mentioned tritium. Three Mile Island had to make an event report for tritium found in its groundwater on its own vicinity, uh, you know, inside the plant boundary. So you're, you're correct. There is yeah, let, 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 let's do a reality check for all those people who want to say Dr. Deagle doesn't know what he's talking about. They will admit in the published report 75% of all nuclear reactors in America release tritium. I want to qualify that. All, ALL, not with exception, all nuclear reactors vent tritium. The reason is you cannot maintain micro cracks between the containment area that generates steam, which is mainly steam turbines or water turbines or whatever. It's basically nuclear reactions heating water to form steam or hot water. There is no way to completely contain that. And when you have neutrons striking water, it creates heavy water, which is deuterium and tritium, which is two neutrons in the, in the water molecule. So it is impossible to not generate tritium. Now, it also means if there's enough rent in those structures of those steam turbines, like the ones in San Onofre, you're going to also release other radioisotopes, thorium, strontium, etc. You have to really have a major disruption in order to do that. But they all release tritium. There's no doubt about that at all. Now, tritium, what does it do? It's not good. Tritium will cause a slippage of your DNA when it tries to re replicate. And that means it's called slippage of the codons. It intercalates in the DNA uh, double helix and slides it over one DNA base pair. As a result, the DNA cannot replicate correctly. Big, real bad problem. Now, they'll tell you it's okay, but we know there's zones of radiation effects, including dementia, heart disease, birth defects, small for dates, you name it, trisomic Down syndrome, in zones around every reactor. And we're talking about reactors where they say they've had total high quality security, no radiation release, no incident reports, because they're all venting tritium. Interesting, eh? Yeah, and, and it's very difficult to contain. Like, not possible. How about not possible? It's not, you can't it's, with, not possible. it's not possible. You can't you can't have these engineering systems with the current engineering design. What what they need to do is have direct what they call nuclear to power generation, which is called a plasma generator like the tokamak fusion reactors that people think is theoretical. And the fact is they won't release this technology because they don't want to uh, have unlimited energy to the population. And uh, believe it or not, the largest buyer into new energy is the king of Saudi Arabia, Rio Tinto Mize, the queen, and... Uh, the uh, Carlisle Group, which includes George Bush Sr., etc. <laughs> Welcome back, and... Uh, Let's go through the whole range of things in this segment. We need to touch on what's going on in Fukushima, the NRC. How big is this disaster likely to become? Uh, and how much will it impact not only in the evacuation? There's a war game going on uh, this week uh, with the United States, the first war game in Tokyo, planning for in the next four years an evacuation due to a superquake. They've actually, the U.S. has put a limit saying within four years they expect an earthquake large enough. That doesn't even take into the equation the fact that they know. It could happen in the next three, six months, a year, or less. If there's a major radiation release from Fukushima, they'll have to evacuate. They don't have a choice. And how are they going to move millions of people from the largest metropolitan area on Earth, which is 45 million people from greater Tokyo, out of the way of this radiation cloud, which, was, by the way, will blow toward us 
and we are going to gradually bioaccumulate more of this mess before it becomes catastrophic to where people are starting to get serious health defects, cortical problems I call the uh, zombie apocalypse from Fukushima. People think that cortical activity won't have an effect or that people won't get more violent or more get more decorticate because of radiation. I beg to differ. One of the first effects that happens after high exposure to radiation is decorticate brain activity. People start acting like zombies, believe it or not. So we need to be aware that this problem is going to, we haven't even seen the worst of the start of this problem, let alone the end of it. What's happening? I'm glad you brought that up, and I haven't heard any more information about it since the, since uh, we talked about that last week, about the uh, evacuation exercise drill, exercise in quotation marks, I imagine. And, uh, no, I don't know how it would happen. Maybe the most important people would be evacuated first, and I don't know how they would rank everybody in, in, that, in that respect. Uh, also going on, there's a team of retired TEPCO engineers, experts, and, and they're experts at Fukushima, experts on Fukushima. They're volunteering to go and help. They've been volunteering, actually, uh, since uh, probably around August of, of last year. And TEPCO repeatedly says, no, you can't help us. We don't want you to come and help us. And they're coming here to speak to uh, speak to Congress and see if they can push a push on it. What these guys are doing, they're saying, listen, we're, we've lived our lives. We're, set, we're over 70 years old. We already know the plan. We're intimately familiar with all the details. And remember we said that you're losing that kind of knowledge. We don't have that kind of knowledge. And I, I can talk more about There's a good segue into that. And these folks are volunteering their time. They said, you could overexpose us. It really doesn't matter. And that's what you really look for in a life-saving situation or a flat-saving situation. You look for one of your older guys who aren't going to, well, basically, the past childbearing years and all that stuff. And, and By the way, but, uh, <clears throat> here's the problem, though. Even if you have smart old guys that walk in there, the radiation levels are so high, they'll be blubbering and, and drooling within minutes. Yeah, well, I'm not we would close them uh, to the back. You know, but but but, but if they take our nutraceuticals, and I mentioned this before, our Nutramed line, they'll block out 99 percent of the effect of the radiation, even in their little paper radiation suits. So they, if you have anybody that can contact them, if they're willing to volunteer, we will try to get the material to them at cost, at our cost to those radiation workers who want to go to Japan. So uh, we, we volunteered the first hour to get it just over cost for Dave Snucks or anybody, my neighbor in need.org. We'll get it to them at cost for anybody, any of these radiation uh, scientists, engineers, technicians who want to go to the Fukushima area. We will provide them all the nutraceuticals at cost to protect them while they're there. Because even if they want to do something, if you get exposed and you're sick within 10 or 15 minutes, you're going to accomplish nothing other than becoming a hero, and your face will be on a plaque, or you'll be have a statue made in the future if there still is a Japan left. Well, uh, this, this does make a... you got to be able to survive long enough to do some good, otherwise it's pointless. Exactly, that, that's true. Even, and even if I would utilize their expertise in training some other folks how to do it also. Uh, I just wanted to talk... Well, they're going to have to go close there. enough in the plant to get to actually go to the areas, too. And the plant is a mess now, so they know where things were when they were before the plant was, was destroyed. They can get that's there in the dark, through water, through exactly. you know, all, all kinds of adverse conditions. Also, uh, we're finding that uh, there there is a, a report that a subcontractor to TEPCO is making its its workers, we have dosimeters that go into radiation areas, and what that does is it tells you, it's a representation of how much you've absorbed as right. well as gamma radiation. Yeah. Yeah. They, are, they are told to make lead, lead sheets for their, to hammer them out, make a lead box basically to put their dosimeters in, which of course makes you report less whole body dose than you've actually absorbed, so that remember, you only have a, you only have a limit on how much radiation you get. Now, there's so many when you once you re- reach that limit, you can no longer work at that point for a certain fi- time period. You no longer can work in the industry for right. a time, time period. Now, the radiation levels are so high, and the workers are so scarce. Those, those who know what's going on, they want to minimize the actual amount of radiation shown on their dosimeters, and so it it lengthens their. Daytime, shall we say, their their duration at the job site, 
And that's a, that's a pretty serious, and that's illegal here. I've seen, and people try to... Uh, well, actually, people need to go to jail for that. That's that's the kind of crime oh, where yeah. basically it's putting workers in grave danger. I've also heard that people are working off Yakuza debt for the Yakuza Mafia in Japan and being sent there as untrained, unqualified technicians to do menial jobs, which basically means they're actually going to put themselves in danger and just die from radiation poisoning. Uh, this isn't right. We need to have people that are starting to deploy more advanced technologies like cable or radiation-proof robots that can be operated remotely, which we know we have for deep space exploration. We need to actually help the Japanese. do. They're going to start pulling out these fuel rod assemblies. Are they going to come out in one piece or a bunch of pieces? We don't know. The newer fuel rods you've mentioned uh, when we talked to it a few days ago are more likely to go critical than the old ones, which means... We're dealing with something that can happen any day where a massive radiation release can occur from any one of these situations of the plant reactor. One, two, three, and cooling pool four. And once it gets bad enough, there can be no servicing of any of the, of the plants or reactors on the whole site. No, the radiation levels would be really uh, too intense. Uh, important, important question I want to ask. Stanford University's report. I, I was choking to not vomit when I read the report from Stanford. This is an obscenity that they would say how little, how few people will die as a result of the radiation release from Fukushima. It made me ill. These scientists, there's a new crime I would call, uh, which basically is a form of science fraud that needs to have people that do science fraud like this go to prison and the key needs to be thrown away so they can never publish again. Well, the it depends on where they're getting the grant from. Yeah, well, uh, the, the people and the granters and the, and the source of the grant should actually be gone, too. Uh, when I read that they said how few people would die from this, it made me sick. When you know the amount of radiation that's going on, it's just obscene. Well, I, I do know that um, the radiation is out, and they do admit then that there is a release of radiation. They certainly are admitting it, but what they're trying to do is to minimize or dilute the effects of that radiation on the environment and on the people. That's what they're trying to do, and I, I don't buy it. I, I know you don't buy it. So, Well, the uh, thing is, not telling lies is actually going to heal, kill the nuclear industry. People need to understand, as I've said before, there has to be nuclear power in our future, but it has to be safe. Any way of improving the technology so it's safe nuclear has not been done. And if there is advanced technology, which I know it does exist, they're not going to deploy it. They're going to deploy what I call dangerous radioactive technology because you have to understand the global elite are socio-psychopaths. They don't see other people as fellow human beings that they have em empathy over. There is zero empathy there. They actually get their jollies off by seeing people die or getting radioactive or knowing there's more abortions or spontaneous miscarriages or early dementia or heart disease. Uh, you know. They get their jollies in the idea of knowing that a good chunk of the population will become sterile, have deformed babies. That's because they're satanic. Right. And people to think, oh, Dr. Deagle, you're just, you're just exaggerating. No, I'm not. That's why, you know, the movie makers that make movies like Batman, and to many people that are, quote, normal, remember this is an electronic drug. You have to understand these video games and these high-powered movies are electronic drugs. Now, if you have a lot of normal empathy, you can take that, just like a certain amount of poison, like you can have a little bit of arsenic and it won't kill you. But if you've already got a damaged brain, you've already got a damaged family, you're maybe also the, uh, the object of experimentation or what we call transgenerational cursing and, and malfunctioning behavioral uh, in the family or in the organization or in the CIA. The CIA, I consider a dysfunctional family. You become a member of the CIA just like Obama. He's our first CIA president. His family are all spooks. What do we think we have? Yeah, and by the way, the head for the CIA, as I mentioned before, is Aurora, Colorado, not Langley, Virginia. Interesting. Yep. Closing comments, uh, both the NRC and both Fukushima. Chris. Okay, they, they need more people in the industry trained and ready to go. And that's the only way to implement all of the near-term near task force recommendations. That's not being addressed, so we need more We need more people. That's what we need. You're talking about here in America, too, right? More people yeah, in America. in the world, and, and right. there is no clear-cut uh, real response plan response yeah. team. We said that from day one. I know that's how we talk together. That needs to happen or we're never going to recover from any other any other events like And that, that other reactor that's here in America that's just like TEPCO has not had upgrades either, right? Amazing. I'll post all the articles. Thank you gentlemen. Thank you.